Welcome to this video on data collection plans. My name is Dr. Susie Miltner, and I am a faculty member at the University of Alabama at Birmingham School of Nursing. I am also a member of the Bax National Faculty. You have seen this slide before in previous materials in the measurement and analysis curriculum, but what you are about to see will appear very basic, simple, and easy. But unfortunately, it is not easy in real life. So don't underestimate the importance of fundamentals. Take the time and put in the effort to get it right. You will be glad you did. We measure to understand what is occurring, to determine if it is due to chance or assignable causes, to determine if improvement or implementation interventions are working, and to assess sustainability, reliability, and accountability. But our measurement is only as good as our measurement plan and data collection. The objective for this module is to learn how to plan, test, and complete collection of improvement data. You have been introduced to the inverted triangle before. The crucial message from this graphic is that your measures and measurement plan must be driven by your global aim, which is usually an organizational imperative, and your specific aim, which is what you are specifically striving for in your improvement work. From those aims, you and your team will make decisions about what change ideas you will test. Once you understand your baseline processes, write your aims and decide what your first tests of change are, you determine what measures you need to see if your change idea really makes an improvement. Each of your measures needs a conceptual definition and an operational definition. Finally, each measure needs a plan to collect and analyze the data when it is obtained. And this is the focus of this video. As a quick review, recall that there are literally thousands of metrics monitored nationally and locally. Ideally, you choose metrics, especially outcome metrics, that are well-defined across systems. Here are some examples of common quality metrics. New improvers often have difficulty picking measures. You will almost always have a measure that reflects your specific aim or your outcome measure. You almost always need other measures as well. In the measurement basics video, we discuss the multiple measurement frameworks for improvement. But a useful place to start for new improvers is the IHI framework for outcome, process, and balancing measures. Once we have selected what we want to measure, we must clearly define our measures. Measures need a conceptual and operational definition. The conceptual definition is a description of what you are going to measure. The operational definition is how you will measure it in specific detail. This operational definition will drive your data collection plan. Once you have created an operational definition for each measure, your work is not complete until you make a detailed plan about how you will collect your data. There are several questions that must be addressed in your data collection plan. What data co collected? Where will the data be collected? How will it be collected? Who will collect the data and how will they be trained? And when will the data collection stop and start? Let's look at, take a look at each of these questions. First, what data will be collected? This question is related directly to your conceptual and operational definitions. Is this a count of a specific event, like the number of falls or hospital-acquired infections? Is this a score from a self-reported survey, like the patient experience survey known as HCAPS? Or is it a clinical screening tool, like the PHQ-9, that is widely used to screen for depression? Or are you collecting biometric data, like blood pressure, hemoglobin, A1C, or something else? As you decide what data will be collected, it is important to keep your colleagues informed so that they are aware of the measures you choose and the rationale for choosing them. The second question is where, and there are two parts to this where question. Where will the data be collected from and where will the data be stored? Is this primary data collection? If so, where is the clinical area or what patients or staff are you collecting data from? If this is secondary data collection from an electronic health record or administrative data set, what variable fields are you using within those um, administrative sets? Second, after you decide where you're going to collect the data from, you need to understand where you're going to store it. 
Most healthcare entities have strict rules about data security and patient privacy. So you will need to be knowledgeable about what your setting requires, especially for patient level data. The third question is how the data will be collected. What are the exact steps to collect the data? This is called a data collection protocol, and you must be explicit about the data collection process. So this is just a quick, simple example of collecting data about cycle times in parts of patient being seen by providers in a primary care clinic. So your instructions may be at the reception desk, the patient will be given a clipboard, stopwatch, and a data form with written instructions to record cycle times. In addition, the receptionist will review the instructions with the patient prior to handing the materials to them and instruct them where to return the completed forms and materials. So these types of explicit steps will help you ensure fidelity of the data collection. The more clarity you have about how the data are collected, the more consistency you will have in the collection. Not only do you have to develop a data collection protocol, but you have to identify the people who will collect the data. All data collectors must be trained and ideally observed to ensure the data are being collected in a consistent manner. You should also consider a plan B if the people you train to collect data are not at work one day or if they transfer to another job. You need to consider a sustainability plan for your data collection. And finally, these data collectors need to understand that this work is one of their job responsibilities and they must be given time to complete this work. It can't just be another duty as assigned if they have time to do it. Finally, when will the data be collected? Data analysis ideally includes at least 12 to 15 data points per improvement cycle. Data collection is resource intensive, so it may not be realistic to collect data for every event or for long extended periods of time. The improvement team must plan for a data collection timeframe that is feasible and still represents the overall process. So what exactly is a feasible time period to collect data? If the workflow is fairly consistent, a Monday through Friday day shift data collection can be acceptable, even in a 24-7 environment. However, if the work in the clinical setting varies over time, you must sample from the slow and the busy days to get data to understand the processes across the whole setting. You can't just skip data collection on Fridays because it's the busiest day and they have one less assistant on duty that day. You have to consider all aspects of the processes. Pilot testing of the data collection plan should include training data collectors and testing the collection process on a small scale. This small scale can be a few patients, a few events, or even a, a, a small period of time, like a few days up to a week. This pilot testing of your data plan may be considered an early PDSA cycle for your project. This can save valuable time and resources and cost by identifying problems before baseline data collection begins or the intervention is deployed. You do not want to waste resources collecting dozens or even hundreds of data points to find out that your operational definition won't work due to system issues, too many exclusions, or parts of the data that are just not available. This is a brief example of piloting your data collection. Too many improvers collect data that will not be useful to understand their improvement activities. Let's go back to the falls example used in the discussion of conceptual and operational definitions. Patient falls is a problem in healthcare that causes serious harm. Your improvement team decides that you are going to reduce patient falls on unit XYZ. And, they and your team decides that um, the number of falls will be your outcome measure that will be used to judge whether or not your interventions are improvement. However, falls is a rare event. And you may not have enough data to do comparisons between units or facilities or even over time. In this example, the manager 
is retaining a copy of all the events reports, the incident reports related to falls, so that the team can have this data each month. However, in June, she reports that there are zero patient falls on unit XYZ. Now what do you do? How can you evaluate whether or not your interventions are working when you have zero falls reported? Testing this analysis with a small or even a mocked up data set can help the team visualize whether the measure will provide enough information to see if their improvement efforts are working. In this case, the team decided they would need additional types of measures to be able to evaluate whether or not their interventions were working. So as a reminder, measurement should speed up improvement, not slow it down. The goal is improvement, not measurement. So you need just enough information to know that your change is an improvement. And good data collection plans allow for better measurement of your improvement work. 